let's say you had full creative control over like a project. Like let's just say somebody said, you know, Tony Oliver, we're gonna give you, you know, X amount of money, go make whatever you want, whether it be live action or animated, like blue sky, what would you like to do? Wow. Um, I have a number of things I'd like to do. <laughs> Um, uh, in, in terms of anime or, or Japanese product, there, there actually, there's actually a show in, in Japan called Garo, which I really like a lot. It's, it's a live action Power Rangers. It's a, kind of a Power Rangers for adults. And um, I'd love to, 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 to remake that show in the U.S. Um, or at least do what we did with Power Rangers on it. Um, you know, do a little bit of combination of their footage and our footage. I think it would be, work really well. So far, no one's licensed it. Um, I have a couple of uh, I have a feature film that, I, that I'm writing right now that I would that I would make it's kind of a spoof on Power Rangers, um, and um, there, there's a couple of things that I would like to do, but uh, you know, somebody has to show up with a checkbook first. <laughs> well, um, in case you didn't know, they they just re or they just did or are releasing a sequel to Garo in Japan, yeah. so it's still out there. So. No, it's still there. It just hasn't been licensed in the U.S. Yeah. The reason is, is there's a lot of nudity. It is very much for adults, and I don't think American producers understand that you can do this for adults and it'll work. Yeah. It will work. <laughs> and um, I guess moving on to the next track from Jumping From Anime to Power Rangers, mm -hmm. um, I guess for all the viewers out there that don't know, can you describe like, what you did on Power Rangers just a little bit? I was the development producer and head writer for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the first three seasons. And the ADR director as well. And you know, Power Rangers was you know um, a huge success. It spawned you know a few other shows that Saban did. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about your involvement on those other ancillary shows? I had I, I didn't have a lot to do with you know there were, you're talking about VR Troopers, Mask Rider, and Big Bad Beetleborgs. Yeah. Um, um, I had a little bit to do with VR Troopers only at the very outset. I did some comments on scripts and I helped them do some of the sales promotions for it. And, uh, and, and all of the ADR was the, 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 for the show was run through my department because I ran the ADR department at the time as well. So, uh, so, but I didn't have a lot of that. was really Bob Hughes' show, and, 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 and he also handled Big Bad Beetleborgs. Um, in terms of Mass Rider, those guys, by that time I was pretty much walking out of that division and moving into feature films, so I didn't have a lot to do with it. I did a lot of their sales presentations when you know they had to go to New York and, and we announced the bit Bad Beetleborgs. I directed the live show at the, at the, in New York that, that presented all of that. But um, but uh, but no, I didn't have a lot to do with it. Except occasionally I would visit the set and see people and say hi. <laughs> and you know, I've, I think I heard another interview you were a fan of, or I believe I heard you were a fan of a Common Rider. The original Common Rider, yeah. <clears throat> How do you feel? I mean, what what to you appeals what appeals to you about that show? Well, it's the origin of this of the whole Sentai movement. I mean, it's uh, I, what appeals to me about it mostly is that once I found out how that show came about, I found out it was very cool, and and uh, I, I got the opportunity to uh, to interview on camera um, Ishimori-san, who is the brother of Ishimori, who who created Common Rider, and uh, and discuss the origins of that show, and, um, and it was kind of cool. I got to go to Tokyo and do this. But he, um, the, the, the show came out of the rubble of World War II, and the whole concept of Kamen Rider came from this hero that he'd seen in, in, you know, after a bombing of Tokyo, and, and here's this guy on a, with a helmet and a, and a cape on a motorcycle, and he thought, we need this, because they were desperate at that particular point. And I just love that it, that it grew out of a child's vision of a soldier on a motorcycle. And, and the fact that he's, he's kind of a bit of a flawed hero, too, and there's, he's got his issues, and which is something I've always liked about Japanese heroes, is they're not always perfect. They always have a little something that, that you know, they're human in that respect. And I just think it's cool. I just always thought it was very cool. And, and, um, and the, the, the last incarnation of, of, of Kamen Rider I thought was pretty good. That was done here in the U.S. Yeah. And um, I guess, just wrapping it up, is that, um, you know, in hindsight, you know, knowing you guys had a Common Rider show and did Mass Rider, I mean, would you have done it differently now, especially now that you know about the origins of it? Or? Yes, absolutely. Look, they were trying to take they were trying to take that concept and the footage that they had and make a little kid's show out of it. And Common Rider really is not a little kid's concept. It, it can't be just because of the origins of what it is. Um, you know, and the show the show you know I have to be honest, the show wasn't very effective. I, I like Little Furby, 
a little Furbus. Furbus, Furbus, yeah. that was the character. Especially because it was Jim Varney in the, in the suit, you know, so Minnie Me was, uh, it was very funny. You'd go to the set at lunchtime, and he'd always, you know, this little guy, he'd always, he'd have the little fursuit kind of bent down, and he'd be sitting back, and he'd have a big cigar that was bigger than he was, and a blonde on each, on each arm. <laughs> Even be, even before Mini Me, he was that way. So um, so no, I thought it was. I, I thought I, I thought the show had some potential. I, I kind of wish they'd done that show, but not made it Common Rider. I think because people had an expectation that it was going to be one thing, and then it was another. It was a, a, just a little bit too iconic for them to do that with. So. And, uh, you said you liked uh, the newest version of it, which was Common Rider Dragon Knight. I mean, yeah. What did, you, what did you like about that? Well, I liked that it was more adult. I, I mean, it was still a kids show, but it was but it was a little bit more teen oriented. It was a little bit more adult. It was a, it was a little darker. They tried to be the anti Power Rangers, which I thought was a good thing. I mean, Power Rangers is great. Look, I helped create it. I think it's a wonderful thing. But you can't always do that, you know. And it was nice to have a Sentai show that was that was a little bit little darker, a little bit more adult, a little bit more um, more contemporary, uh, contemporary American rather than contemporary Japanese. And so I thought it did well. I also got to direct the video game for it, so. <laughs> and uh, do you have any uh, last comments for any fans or just anybody who might be watching this video? Well, look, I've, um, I've been really lucky. I, I, got, I got involved, I stumbled into this. I stumbled into anime and I stumbled into voice work. And, um, and I've been really fortunate to work on some great properties. And I've been fortunate to have the fans really support what I do. And, uh, and allow me to have the life that I've, that I've had. And I'm, I'm eternally grateful for it, and I will be till my last breath. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.